Hello, JH Hotline, Lippy speaking, how can I help? Well, have we got a dark humoured gay homo play to submit? Then no, I can't help you. Hello, JH. Oh, bring it all up, love. Oh no, Tamika's out of lunch at the moment while well, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, she said she's on the diet, but there's a distinct waft of the chicks when I walk past her at about 11 C's. Yeah, I know she's a white fat mama cares. Ah. Hello, JH Hotline. Well, if you can't spice up your life, don't bother to ring. Just broke my iPhone. Well, welcome to the pursuit of hilarious. Yes, if you haven't guessed, we're going to be looking at everything gay, fun, and fabulous with the fabulous Jennifer Harvey. Now I'm going to confess, I am a little bit obsessed with this man, mainly because of one show in particular, Gimme Gimme Gimme, and how it inspired my naughty side. Jonathan Harvey was born in Liverpool on June 13th, another Gemini. Went to the University of Hull, became a playwright from 1987, or possibly before. Has numerous rewards for the mediums of film, TV, theatre and books. He's also worked on numerous TV projects including Murder Most Horrid, Beautiful Thing, Coronation Street, and another one of his works that I'm obsessed with is Beautiful People. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's about gay people in Reading. Reading! He is also one of the pioneers for the 90s push for gay mainstream media, alongside Russell T. Davis, who wrote the UK Queer as Folk, and was named one of the most influential gay men in The Independent in 2006. Probably also 2018, if that's still going. He's also an activist by being a patron for the HIV charity group, The Food Chain. Now a little fun, the 13 degrees of separation of me and Mr. Harvey. Jonathan Harvey writes plays and books. One of his plays called Panto was produced by Baby Cow. A baby cow was called a calf. A calf is a floating piece of ice detached from the iceberg. Ice, which is the name of one of the numerous bars in Reading at one point. Reading is where the beautiful people is set. But it's actually set in Ealing. Ealing rhymes with dealing. Deals can be found at Reading Reading. Everyone's been in bed with Madonna. Madonna snug Britney. Lesbian, lesbians love well watching an orange is the new black me. I'm the new black YouTuber with orange hair. Anyway, let's start the overview. So, Gimme Gimme was created in 1998 and aired from 1999 to 2001. This is probably one of the most nostalgic shows for me as it's in its own time capsule. It somehow feels dated but fresh at the same time. It's also one of the first UK TV shows with a leading gay male. An engine just like. Being produced by Tiger Aspect and with Sue Virtue at the helm, whose work consists of Vicar Dibley, Mr. Bean and Sherlock, we know that we're in good hands. When I first watched this programme, I was around 14, 15, and didn't really understand it. I didn't really get any of the gay or risque jokes, but like most gamers, I was attracted by the colourful display and loud noises. As I grew and admitted a few things about myself, I watched this series again and just got it. The offensive jokes, the camp humour, the vulgarity, and the fact that it holds two of the most despicable yet lovable characters shown on TV. But more about these later. With the rose tinted glasses off, I can now see the show as for what it is. You can see how there's a lot of love put into this show, but at the same time you can see some of the flaws. They aren't particularly bad, but I've watched this so many times you can see the cracks. This also has a lot of Jonathan Harvey's usual tropes, including gay people, lower class backgrounds, and I would love for a 60s-70s camp. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Don't you, Gwyneth Paltrow, it with me, mate. The remarkable thing is, it's pretty much a theatre production, but just on TV. If they wanted to do a play, it wouldn't be that hard. Actually, there was always rumour there's going to be a musical theatre production after the third season. But it never happened. That would have been awesome. And I have to say, even the way how it's framed and how it's acted, it looks like it should be in the theatre. Like, look at this scene. Look at this scene. Like the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none <laughs> <laughs> when I'm stuck with a day that's grey and lonely, 
I just stick up my chin and grin and say, oh. <laughs> tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, intermission. 20 minutes, come back in 20 minutes. The bar is now open. Seriously. Most of the time I'm actually thinking there's going to be a stagehand come on halfway through and move the props around. Anyway, on with the show. There isn't really much of an ongoing story, it's just watching the lives of two characters in real life who you know, love and hate. First we have Tom, played by James Dreyfus, a self-centred, deluded, beleaguered actor who seems to do more acting at home than anywhere else. He's ironically the straight man in the situation, he is the smarter, more melodramatic counterpart of the abusive old couple, but spoilers for a 20-year-old show, he gets a part in Crossroads, a show historically so bad that it's been parodied by most old-school comedians, particularly Victoria Woods. Tom also has a rather hard time finding men, even if he does, he either gets punched or humiliated in the end. <laughs> but you can't do it, Tom. But you can't. I mean, you're crap. <laughs> You'll be a right show up. <laughs> no, Lindy, Lindy. I have just got a leading role in one of Britain's top rated soaps. <gasps> no, Tom, it's Crossroads. <laughs> Here comes the better half, Linda LeHughes, played by Kathy Burke. She's a rampant cesspool of crude jokes, poor upbringing, and cheeky personality. In her own words, nice big chest, filthy personality. She somehow manages to be the schemer and the bust of the jokes. Most of those schemes involve money, sex, or getting money for sex. She's the more interesting of the two as she can always rely on her to lower the tone, the whole concept of the show, and provide some of the most nonsensical stories regarding her past, even her age is a bit sketchy. I'm moving on up, I'm moving on, I'm moving on up, nothing can stop me. She's just this great, rounded character. She has this nice mixture of being down to earth, but then up in the clouds in her own mind, with her own self-importance. She's also really dim, but also has some of the really clever, witty lines as well. And she's a ginger slag. What more could you want? There's also a supporting cast of Jez and Suze, played by Brian Bobble and Beth Goddard, a highly sexual and annoying couple who live in a basement flat. Jez is constantly batting away Linda's advances, and Sue's always perky but getting emotional or physical battering from Linda. Most of their subplots are there just to rub Linda and Tom up the wrong way, or just to get a rub. Fern Britain. Mm. Pan Airs. Mm. Dirty old slapper has been on TV. Eureka, Eureka Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> You also have a Beryl, played by Rosalind Knight, who sounds like she should be a lead singer for a soul group. She's their kooky landlady, who is held memories of her old prostitute lifestyle and spouts oddball sage wisdom, and insists on getting involved in her tenants' lives. What are you doing that for? I take a pride in my dwellings, unlike some. The basement flat's empty, so that only leaves me and you, and since when have you been green-fingered? <laughs> I'd rather not say. I need fags. There's two in your flat at the moment, isn't there? <laughs> As I mentioned, the only real issue with the show is it's pretty much rooted in its late 90s pop culture capsule. Linda was based on Ollie from On The Buses and Ginger Spice. I'm pretty sure the Spice Mania was coming to an end by season 2. Even Linda's costume is based on Ginger Spice. If she ate Scary Spice and shagged Simon Fuller. Well, the Ridic Smut Fest show only lasted for three seasons and it came to an end when Kathy Burt decided to concentrate on theatre work and directing, and James Dreyfus left the cast to appear in a short-lived American sitcom called Betty, which I really wanted to research but restricted. Thanks, YouTube. I also suspect that it ran its course after two seasons, after it's moved from BBC Two to BBC One for the third season. For those outside the UK, that's the media equivalent of switching from Coke, to room temperature diet coke. Mr Harvey was probably asked to change a couple of things to make it easier for the BBC One viewers to swallow. Ooh, uh. There was a slight tonal shift and the characters were slightly adjusted to give a more cartoony, light entertainment friendly feel. 
However, it's just as popular as it ever was, bringing in 6.5 million viewers despite TV critics and gay BLT journalists panning the series. Some say the show was unfunny and Tom, the main character, was setting a bad example for the gay culture. <laughs> However, anyone that liked camp lowbrow but clever jokes, mainly everyone else in the gay BLT community, were more than pleased. It's now become a cult camp classic and now plays on UK Gold and other comedy channels. Again, 6.5 million viewers. Can't be all bad. Well, that was my overview of Gimme Gimme Gimme. I don't really have an exciting way to end this video, so I'm just going to do a top 5, just like everybody else in the YouTube generation. Please enjoy. This is my own personal selection. If you have your own top 5, please let me know in your comments below. Or make your own video. Or don't. This episode is just pure comedy magic. Probably the most character development and one of the funniest uh, games of Shiraz you will words. ever win. Plus, it has a delightful right but now. poignant okay. end, which I kind of shown you. <laughs> Pretty woman, Marco! No, no. <laughs> This is one of the very few episodes in season 3 which I felt like was like the previous season characters without going too far. Again, another episode with our two protagonists being in the main frame and the jokes come thick and fast. Who were? And probably the most self-aware in how ridiculous the whole premise is. Also, you won't be able to say the word custard or tart the same ever again. I should have been on the stage, you know. When I did a play at Ballstall, Screwdriver said to me that I had the biggest jugs of custard she'd ever seen. <laughs> I played the custard lady. Hello, I'm the custard lady. Does anybody want custard? <laughs> and then Big Bertha from Beaming would say, yeah, I want custard, splashing over my tart. Oh, shut up, you. <laughs> Glad to be gay. Since it's Pride Month, why not have the one that challenges sexual stereotypes? Oh, Lindy, oh, drunken Lindy, how I love you. I'll say no more, but Lindy has a question of sexuality. Tom also has a side plot with a trade known as Neville. I think this was the episode that gave gay BLT heart failure. Oh, yeah. I think Beryl's gone back on the game. <laughs> Remind me, if I ever get as big as her, never to wear skin-tight rubber. <laughs> Saturday Night Diva, Linda tries her best to seduce Jez, but let's just say, female allure, not the best. Tom also tries to revitalise his life by going clubbing, and ends up with a man who isn't who he appears to be. Plus this episode has Melon Sue from Bake Off fame. What more can I say? Fantastic. Hold it up here. <laughs> oh, Beverly Ann, could you get the keys for 315, please? Can do, Beverly Jane. <laughs> Number one, Sofa Man. This is my favourite episode, as it has everything. You have Linda at her filthiest, Tom at his most melodramatic and probably has his best line of all the seasons, and all the supporting cast are amazing. Particularly the woman that Linda meets in the factory. It's, it's just pure gold. You even get to see Jonathan Harvey in this as well. What I can advise is just sit back in your sofa, relax and enjoy the crazy. Silly git. I'd like to knock him out. Give him some of that. Quiet. I'm reading my stars. Shush. Is the moon in Uranus? <laughs> Jonathan Harvey is my comedy hero. Cheers. Costcutter's finest. <laughs> 